Feeling the chef's gaze on me, I ate a few fries. They were cold and raw. What happened? I asked Katie. When I opened it, something suddenly rushed past me, something sticky, cold. It touched me very briefly. There was pain. Katie unconsciously pointed to the Z scars on her neck, then continued. Anyway, there was no room on the other side of the door, just emptiness, a deep emptiness. When the journey ended, I immediately felt a change. I felt like I was being watched. All that night, all the next day, all the next week, something haunted me. A shadow, a presence. And I knew, just knew in my heart that if it caught up with me, if it touched me again, I would die. She continued to bite off a piece of pie. Breaking the crust, she let the frozen blueberries slowly fall outward as a small avalanche of jelly. You told me you couldn't see these things, Katie. The door to the diner opened and two men in work coveralls walked in, each holding a helmet. Their clothes were dusty. Katie suddenly straightened in her chair. Two men just entered the diner, right? I nodded. Yeah, just those two. Katie sat down. Why me? I asked. Why did you want to meet? To tell me about this? Katie smiled. For the first time all evening, she smiled. Because I knew you'd believe me. I swallowed hard, my throat suddenly impossibly dry. You were a good friend, Katie brushed off the swell of emotion. In high school, when things were bad, see. With guys or jerks, you were the only one I could confide in. The only one who trusted me. No matter what I did, no matter how stupid it was, you were there for me. A shoulder to cry on, a hand to hold on to. And she reached across the table and took my hand, squeezed it tight. Truth be told, I'd had a crush on Katie for most of middle school. Sure, she was a friend, and a good friend for a while. I liked being her rock, but I always hoped for more. Like most friendships, it started with a one-sided attraction, mine. And even though I hadn't seen her in six months, those feelings remained, dormant but present, waiting to be awakened. While Katie was holding my hand and smiling, I noticed felt her fingernail tracing something on the inside of my palm. Lightly at first, just a little bit of pressure, but then it got sharper until, ouch, Shit. I yanked my hand away and found that Katie had cut me. With the sharp nail of her little finger, she had carved a shape into my skin. It was the backward letter Z, the same one she had on her neck. Blood began to ooze from the center of the small cut. What the hell, Katie? She just shook her head and stood up, backing away from the table, repeating over and over. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to, okay? I should have... What, hurt me? I was furious and confused. Everyone in the diner turned to look at us. Only the cook got up from his seat behind the counter and walked over to us, wanting to help. I waved him off. It's okay, I've got it under control. Katie interrupted then, her voice a barely audible whisper. What? I told him it's okay. She turned pale. To whom? Who did you tell? To the cook, shouted I. He's just trying to help you. There is no cook! There's no one! Katie screamed and backed up. She crashed into the nearest table. Chairs fell over. The silverware scattered. No, no! She screamed. There's no one there! 
The cook knelt beside Katie, and for a split second, I thought perplexedly that he would help her up. But he didn't. Instead, he bent over her. She was crying and shaking and clearly couldn't see him. The cook turned to me, nodded with an unhealthy grin, and then opened his mouth wide, exposing tangled, bloody gums dotted with jagged teeth. With one bite, he tore out her throat. And as Katie's blood spurted onto the linoleum floor, the cook disappeared. Not slowly disappearing, not dissolving into mist. Just one second, she was here, and the next, she was gone. Someone screamed, I think it was the woman in the green coat. Then, when the police arrived, one story came out. All the other people in the diner that night said that Katie had slit her throat with a knife. Where she got the knife from and where it went, they didn't know. They also said that the cook tried to help her. He tried to close the wound and save her life. The police couldn't find him after the ambulance arrived. When I returned to the diner the next day to ask about the incident, the waiter stated that they did not have a cook who looked like the man I described. The man I'd seen. It was as if after Katie's death, all the details of her demise began to unravel, as if the universe had completely erased her from its existence. And now the traveler, whatever he was, had come for me. It had been five days since Katie had died in that diner. Five days I'd been stalked and hunted for. I tracked down Corey, and he led me to Genevieve. She told me what fate awaited me. According to her, the travelers use a symbol, the reverse Z's that were on Katie's neck and that she scratched into my flesh to track their victims. Katie apparently thought she could trick the voyageur into taking me instead of her. It didn't work. And now she's doomed me. It's only a matter of time before there's an extra person on the bus across from me or on the street behind me that I can't see. Right now, I am in my bedroom in my parents' house. I haven't left the house in 48 hours and they are starting to worry about me. They heard that I lost a friend though they can't recall anyone named Katie going to school with me. So they are being compassionate and letting me stay home. But they said I had visitors, people who drop by unannounced, people who, when I stick my neck out the window to see them on the porch, turn out not to be there at all. Just my parents, talking, gesturing into the void. Eventually, I'm going to have to leave this room, or my parents will get worried enough to help me get out, most likely to the hospital. And when I end up there, I'll be asking the same questions Katie did. How many people are here right now? How many exactly? The creature's cold breath filled the room. I closed my eyes, hoping it was all a dream. But when I opened them again, I saw the horrifying truth. The creature was here, right in front of me, its hand reaching for my face. I felt its cold fingers touch my skin. And in that instant, I realized that my curse had come true was its prisoner. I knew now that this world would never be the same that I belonged to the darkness now. I had to fight for survival in this dark world where every moment could be my last. And as I looked into the eyes of this sinister creature, I realized that her battle was just beginning.